Although the parliamentary session was to be convened at 1 p.m. today, the parliamentary agenda did not indicate any of the day's proceedings by morning. It was in this backdrop that the parliamentary group meeting of the governing party was held at noon under the patronage of Prime Minister Mahindra Rajpaksha. Meanwhile, the parliamentary group meeting of the United National Party was held under the patronage of its leader, Ranil Vikramasinghe. <laughs> We can indeed work without an agenda. For that, we can present a current topic and debate it. Later, parliamentarians of the governing party decided at the meeting to not participate in today's session. We too don't accept this parliament and that's why we won't participate in any of its sessions. We will participate in sessions once they start working in accordance with standing orders. If the speaker wants to convene a parliamentary group meeting of the United National Party at the expense of the public, we will mind our own business. The speaker has been caught red-handed for preparing fake documents and we just don't trust him. The parliamentary session, chaired by Speaker Karujaya Surya, however, commenced at the scheduled time of 1 p.m. As announced, none of the parliamentarians representing the governing party participated in the session. Speaker continued with the proceedings despite the absence of the governing party. The entire mechanism of the country will be halted and we will not be able to pay salaries of any of the public sector officials from the 1st of January if a legal prime minister and a cabinet are not appointed by then. So, Speaker, please intervene in the matter, speak with the president and ask him to establish a legitimate government without betraying the country. The president held discussions with journalists representing international media organizations. There he claimed that he cannot appoint me as prime minister because I was involved in the plot to assassinate him. This is a serious matter and an issue related to my parliamentary privileges. I asked the speaker to summon the IGP to parliament because it's been 48 hours since this allegation had been made. Ask them to arrest me or come before the parliament and give their reasons. You have very clearly stated that you do not recognize Honorable Mahinda Rajapaksa as a Prime Minister of this country. That you have not recognized any member as a Cabinet Minister. However, I learned from the media that a group of MPs meet once a week and they make take, take decisions to procure various items. They enter into various agreements with the international organizations, companies as such. And they are trying to bring in various kinds of items to Sri Lanka and various projects are being handed over to them, which is totally illegal. Parliament is supreme and independent from the executive. Mr. Speaker, you have proved your mettle when you ruled that there was no government after the parliamentary vote. I would finally call upon the President to uphold the majority view of Parliament. I believe the last one month we have seen a huge threat to our democratic and uh, value-based system that Sri Lanka has enjoyed for the last 70 years. Certain remarks have been made about you which are entirely subjective. You have acted for the best interest of the majority of the parliamentarians in this house. The fact of the matter is they haven't got a majority. That's why they have not come here. So therefore it's very important that you as the speaker communicate well with the people of this country about your actions. Because there are a lot of misinterpretations being given about the particular role you had to play. Under the present illegal government, tourism is on a self-destructive mode. The tourism of the country realistically was on track from 2015 to reach its target of 4 million tourists by the year 2022. The estimate that we had was that tourism income could be the highest income earner in foreign exchange in the immediate future. Meanwhile, the office of the Leader of the House addressed a letter to the Speaker claiming that it will not accept the parliamentary proceedings on the 14th, 15th, 16th, 19th, 21st and 23rd of November as these sessions were not held in accordance with the Constitution, standing orders or parliamentary norms. Nine parliamentarians, including the Leader of the House and the Chief Government Whip, signed the letter. In the meantime, a media briefing was held at the parliamentary premises today by members of the governing party to clarify their decision to boycott today's session. The Honourable Speaker is acting arbitrarily against the standing orders, constitution and the norms of parliament. If you go through the 
order paper today, there are no subject for discussion. Usually in the order paper, you include some subject for discussion, and thereafter you say the adjournment. Even the fact that you are adjourning the parliament today is also not included in the order paper. This is a serious situation. It is an arbitrary decision of the speaker to print an order paper of this nature. So therefore we are convinced that the speaker is acting at the instructions of Sirikota. Therefore, we can't follow his decisions. They are biased and uh, wrong. Speaker has already declared that there is no prime minister, no government, no minister. Then how can a parliament exist? Can uh, Mr. Karujai Surya show us any parliament in the world without government? He has made parliament a mockery because he is working on a political agenda. We can't be a party to that political agenda. We thought that without creating problems inside the house and bringing disgrace before the international community and before the nation, not to attend this session as a protest for the manner in which uh, the Honorable Speaker, so-called Mr. Karujai Surya, is acting 